Ah, it's finally time for the moment a lot of you guys have been waiting for. We've done best teams for Legends Arceus already, but how about that worst team, huh? There are loads of crappy options for Legends Arceus, and I can finally shed some light onto some of those Pokemon that hardly get the time of day. Well, there are a few mons that get spotlight, but in a negative sense. In fact, I'm already fuming about the fact that I'm going to have to talk about one of those mons shortly. Anywho though, if you're not familiar with the Worst Team series, it's practically the opposite of the Best Team. The Worst Team will be consisting of the absolute worst of the bottom of the barrel Pokemon. But at the same time, I'm not going to make it completely impossible. For example, if you were expecting Unknown to be here, don't worry, I'm not that evil. You will still be able to complete the game, though it will be a lot more challenging than usual. Since there aren't many important battles, I'm going to go from the premise of trying to make the team as balanced as I can, while also hopefully being able to take on Volo. He's going to be the real threat here. And hey, you know what? If you lose to him and want to tell me that my team sucks, I'll take the compliment. Thank you for admiring my work. Let's showcase this team though. Hopefully you guys won't die too much. So, as usual for the worst team, we disclude the starter Pokemon. Starter Pokemon make the game too easy, that's why. The earliest Pokemon we can get from the get-go, and the rodent-based Pokemon we usually see on these worst teams, will be the replacement. I think it's pretty obvious that our replacement starter is going to be B-Barrel. B-Barrel, funny enough, actually isn't the worst option you could have, as you can even capture the Alpha one in the Obsidian Fieldlands. Base 71 speed and 85 attack are just going to have to cut it. The move pool is also more shallow than usual, especially for it being a normal type, but its detriment is its lack of physical attacks in the coverage department, which I will go over right now. The moveset I will be providing on B-Barrel will be Aqua Tail and Giga Impact for Stab. I would use Swift in the meantime. The cool thing is, because these are tutor moves, you will have these pretty early, and the same also applies for coverage. With those moves, it really sucks, because the only physical attacking coverage move it has access to is Iron Tail, which I plan on putting on B Barrel set. Ice Beam will be the other attack because water Pokemon need some sort of ice coverage, regardless of if B Barrel only has 60 base special attack. Now, as far as Iron Tail goes, I only put it here because it has more power, being a physical attacking option. However, if you don't care about having another physical attack, Thunderbolt or Shadow Ball could suffice in its place. That's all for B-Barrel though. I don't really need to explain much, as it's pretty self-explanatory. Let's move on to our next Mon. A detestable one, if that. Ugh. Our next Mon on the team is Wormadam's Grass Form. I've said it multiple times on my channel already. This thing is a hot bag of crap, ready to be lit off on someone's doorstep. The stats are Garbo, it has many weaknesses being a bug and grass type, and in all honesty, Parasect makes this thing look like a joke. The plant Burmy can be found in the Obsidian Fieldlands in Shaking Trees. I've seen people find it by Nature's Pantry, though it should be named Nature's Trash Can, but I digress. Good luck with this thing, because you're going to be stuck with Struggle Bug until level 20. I don't really need to explain how bad this thing is anymore on the surface. So with that said, let's just hop into the move pool. Upon evolving Burmy into Wormadam at level 20, it will finally gain more coverage in its pool outside of just Struggle Bug. Legit, its move pool is just going to consist of whatever the best moves it can get, because there are literally no options for it. Energy Ball, Bug Buzz, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. Every one of these moves aside from Bug Buzz are tutor moves. Bug Buzz can be learned via level up at level 43. Honestly, this looks like a pretty solid moveset. Well, for a decent Pokemon that is. Luckily, strong moves and agile moves are a thing, so that 36 speed may not be the biggest detriment. But regardless, best of luck with this thing. You all are going to need it. Up third is a veteran of the Worst Team series. Surprisingly, it actually doesn't do too bad here for a balanced team. We got Chimeco as our Gardevoir replacement. Chimeco can be obtained over in the Coronet Highlands in the Celestica Trail. Now, there is another Pokemon that could have replaced Chimeco, that being Mr. Mime. But I actually find Mr. Mime too good for a Worst Team this time around. 
Chimeco is the worst psychic type in the game, other than unknown of course, but I don't hate anyone enough to put someone through that. Chimeco more or less has balanced stats, having 80 in defense, 90 in special defense, and 95 in special attack. I would say Chimeco may be one of this team's MVPs, because it also has a decent coverage pool. It sucks that Chime can't be found until later in the game, but honestly that's fine because there will be other mons in the meantime that can take its place. Also, this team is in no particular order, and I felt like putting Chimeco third because it's one of my more favorite mons here. 65 speed is also good for where this team's current speed is. Trust me, we won't be getting any faster than this for a bit. Anywho, we've got options for coverage, so let's hop into that. Psychic, Calm Mind, Shadow Ball, and Dazzling Gleam are going to be the moves we go with today on Chimeco. Psychic is our best stab option. I don't know how they let Chimeco keep Psychic, but they didn't let Garchomp keep Earthquake. You hate to see it. Dazzling Gleam is next, and that's probably going to be one of your best means of offense in regards to taking on Volo's Garchomp. Calm Mind is here for powering up, as I feel more offensive presence is needed. Shadow Ball helps with other Psychic Mons, and of course other Ghost types Chime may run into. All of these moves are tutor options by the way, so when you decide to add these moves on is entirely up to you. This team is looking pretty shitty, and Chimeco is going to be one of the main forms of offense. I bet you can't wait to see the rest of the team now, huh? You know what really bugs me? Not having another bug type here. I've mentioned a few times that the bug typing's presence in Legends Arceus isn't really needed. However, on a worse team, I 100% disagree with that sentiment. I give you prepare to suffer through hell, because now you have to listen to Cricketune's annoying cry for the rest of your game. This is the perfect candidate for a worse team right next to Wormadam. But Mystic, two bug types? Yeah, I know. Cool, huh? Just take a nice look at these stats. Simply divine, isn't it? And it's move pull to die for. Rather than have me explain its greatness, let's just hop into the moveset right now. x Scissor, Night Slash, Aerial Ace, and Swords Dance. x Scissor is going to be the best stab option Cricketune has, unless you want to use Leech Life for recovering purposes. Either are fine, honestly. Aerial Ace can be tutored, and it's going to be used for other bug types. Night Slash has 70 base power, and has a high chance for critical hits. And Swords Dance can enhance Crick's offensive capabilities. x Scissor can either be tutored or learned via level up at level 29, Night Slash can be learned at level 21, Swords Dance is learned at level 37, and Aerial Ace can of course be tutored back on, like I said earlier. 65 base speed is the new meta, so be prepared to use Cricketune. So I was thinking we needed a Mon to replace Gudra, except it obviously being a lot crappier than it. I had a few options to consider. One was Golem, and the other was Probopass. Golem actually isn't terrible, but it crossed my mind. And Probopass isn't ideal, but it isn't the worst. Then I realized something. Fossil Mons were in this game, and the option I went with was Bastiodon. Shieldon can be found in the Coronet Highlands via space-time distortion, so you will have to wait until that pops up, but I doubt it will take that long. Bastiodon definitely has the shield that takes some heavy-ass hits, and I wanted to make sure that if the worst team was going to be slow, we had a very tanky mon to boot. The detriment is the fact Bastiodon will only be providing defense, because both its special attack and physical attack stat are both terrible. 52 physical attack and 47 special attack is downright atrocious. However, this is the worst team, so you're welcome. For Bastiodon's moves, it really depends on what you want to do with it. To be honest, I feel it doesn't really matter that much what you put on here, but I would obviously run Iron Head for Steel Stab, Rock Slide for Rock Stab, Earth Power for Coverage, and Power Shift for its last slot. I'm kidding, don't run that. It looks really solid on paper, but it leaves Bastiodon susceptible to a range of attacks, and with the typing it has, having near base 50 defenses will literally decimate this poor thing, because it switches its offensive and defensive stats. As far as the last slot goes, you can pretty much run whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. 
Lastly, may be surprisingly the best Pokemon on the team, but it's also definitely the most tedious to get. Our last Pokemon today is Overquill. You can find Hisui and Quillfish in the Cobalt Coastlands in the water. You actually don't need Basque Legion to obtain it either. There's a video where a dude goes on the side of a cliff, and he pretty much captures Quillfish using that method. After capturing Quillfish, Overquill is your next objective, and how to evolve it can take a little bit of time. Quillfish has to use Bar Barrage 20 times in the strong style. With the games being out for quite a bit now, I shouldn't have to explain the process at this point. Overquill actually packs decent stats in comparison to the rest of the team, having a whopping base 85 speed and 115 physical attack. Now, I am actually going to leave it up to you guys though, because there is another Poison Dark type available, being Skuntank. It has a little less viable of a move pull than Overquill does, but the stats are more or less similar, with the exception of the physical attack stats. I'm mainly going to be focusing on Overquill though, because this team does need some help. But in all honesty, Skuntank can be used as well. So like I said, I leave it to you with whatever one you want to choose. There is one thing that Skuntank has access to that Overquill does not have, and that's a physical dark type attack. Overquill's only dark option is Dark Pulse, and with 65 base special attack, that is a little unfortunate. But with that unfortunate dark stab, we also have Poison Jab, Aqua Tail, and Ice Beam slash Giga Impact for the last attack. Poison Jab is going to be its best line of offensive power, with the rest of the moves just helping out in case of some coverage emergencies. Ice Beam could come in handy, but if you're looking to take advantage of that 115 physical attack, Giga Impact will be your better option. For the lulls, you can even run Self Destruct, if you're feeling ballsy. Dark Pulse can be learned via level up at 26, Poison Jab is learned at level 29, or can be tutored on, Aqua Tail can be learned at level 37 or tutored on, and Ice Beam or Giga Impact are also both tutor options. I'm starting to think Skuntank actually has the edge here on Overquill. The cool thing is, for a worst team, is that Overquill is more tedious to evolve than Skuntank, and its Dark Stab is Booty. So Overquill actually could be the worst of the two. You guys let me know down below what option you think is the worst option. I'm sure you guys will comment movesets for Skuntank too if you do decide to use that instead. Okay, now onto the battles. Firstly, let's hop into the Noble Battles. Cleaver can be dealt with by using Bee Barrel. The water moves should be able to aid with this battle easily. Lilligant is next, and surprisingly, Cricketune with Aerial Ace should be able to cover that, making it a quad weakness. Bee Barrel can once again help with taking on Hisui and Arcanine. Cricketune and Wormadam should be more than enough for Hisui and Electrode. For Avalug, Bastiodon should be more than enough to handle that. As far as trainer battles go, the opposite gender character from you, Volo and Mai, are all very easy early battles that you should be able to push your way through with the likes of Bee Barrel, Cricketune, and Wormadam. Lian's Gumi will go down easily. The Misfortune Sisters shouldn't be that difficult. Crick's Aerial Ace should be enough for Coin's Toxicroak. And for the two other sisters, I'm sure you guys will figure it out. Chimeco can't be obtained until the Coronet Highlands, so that does kind of pose a problem. <laughs> oh well. It is the worst team after all, so struggling is what it's about. Adamant and Irida's Grass and Ice Evolution combo can be handled by both Cricketune and Bee Burl's Iron Tail. By the time you get to Benny, the worst team will be completed, therefore making your battles a little easier. Benny's team consists of Miss Magius, Sneasler, Gardevoir, and Golade. Overquilp can handle Miss Magius and Gardevoir easily, and Chimeco can handle Sneasler and Golade. Shortly after, the battle with Commodo commences. His team has Hisui and Braviary, Golem, Clefable, and Snorlax. Hisui and Braviary and Clefable can be taken care of with Overquill. Golem will go down easily to any grass or water type attacks. And lastly, there's Snorlax, which... Crap. It seems like we don't have any fighting type attacks. Well, I guess you're going with Rock Smash on Cricketune then. It shouldn't be that hard, don't worry. It's not like Snorlax is invincible or anything like that. It just might be a tad bulky. Lastly, for main trainer battles, we have Volo, the strongest trainer in the game. This ancestral Cynthia is boasting quite the power. Spiritomb, Rose Raid, Togekiss, Hisui and Arcanine, Lucario, and Chump Chomp. I mean Garchomp. 
I talk smack, but watch this thing be this team's nightmare. Right off the bat, it looks like Bastiodon is going to be playing a big role here, especially against Togekiss, Spirit Tomb, and Roserade. Personally, Bastiodon will wrap up Togekiss fast enough. Lucario can get rock smashed by Cricketomb. Spirit Tomb's best contender will literally be any Mons on the worst team, give or take. It's really up to you. Roserade will go down the Chimeco, Hisui and Arcanine will be slain by B Barrel and your best offensive option for Garchomp will be B-Barrel's Ice Beam or Chimeco's Dazzling Gleam. So yeah, best of luck in this battle. Be sure to train up your values, because you're gonna need them. We have one more battle with Giratina, and it looks like Overquill can help out with that. Well, that wraps up the worst team for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Pretty crappy team, huh? You should be thanking me for making this game challenging. If I were to attempt Legends Arceus with this team though, I guarantee I'd probably get thrown to the floor a couple of times. And my controller might too. Let me know if you change anything on this team though. I'm curious to see if you guys can make it worse than what it is. Remember, unknown does not count. Hey hey guys, thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. It's exciting times for the Pokemon franchise, and I look forward to the coming months where it just keeps getting better. If you guys are wanting some more bite-sized Mystic Umbreon content, please check out my TikTok, where I upload daily, as well as the Mystic Umbreon Shorts channel. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I think it's time to wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.